Hot town somewhere in the city. Back of my neck, feeling dirt and gritty. Cool cats looking like a kitty. Strolling all around in all the damn cities. Out night, it's a big world. And it's got an outsider. And it's all in the world. At night, it's a different world. Go out and find a girl. Come on, come on to dance all night. Just like the heat, it'll be all right in babe. Don't you know it's a pity the days can't be like that in the summer. In the city. In the summer. In the city. Mm, I'm leaving. Fuck this. With the muffler, Ryan Bruckner, I'm Mike... Big Tobacco Ryan, and this is my intro. Ah, oh, shit. I blew it. Hold on. I'm, I'll get it. Ryan. You don't, I'll start again. <laughs> I like doing the foot lock, I like pretending... I'm gonna pretend to walk quietly and the, open the door. The mic probably didn't pick leave. any of that foot stomping up. Well, no, I wasn't, dude. If, dude, I'll if you want me to do foley around here, I'll do foley around here. I'll, I'll get a fucking shotgun mic, hook that motherfucker up to my Zoom 4M, make foley sounds. I'll pick up your make footsteps. Make foley nouns. Make foley sounds. Yeah, I know Mick Foley is. Wow. I only have consonants. How are you going to make Mick Foley nouns? <laughs> like, what the fuck? He's would, a proper noun. That sounds so That's awesome. what, For one thing. There's nothing proper about you could mankind. Probably, you could probably scramble around the letters in Mick Foley to make different words. With the muffler, Ryan Bruckner, I'm Mike Big Tobacco Ryan, and this is my intro. Welcome to Squared Circle Cinema. Check us out at SCC underscore podcast. On Twitter. How's it going, Ryan? It's going good. It's going good. It's going good. How yeah, good? Wow, you sound great, good. man. What's going good about it? What happened? I just saw this movie. What? That I wonder if you've seen it. Was it film number 29, 5,139, Die Hard with a Vengeance, starring Ludwig Borga and Damien Demento? Did you know that Damien Demento was in the first ever Raw main event where he lost to The Undertaker? No. Okay. It, it, it's not that. No, what movie? Tickled. Have you seen this movie? Tickled? Is this a documentary? Yeah. About men that get off on getting tickled. It's not about men that it's get... It's a community well, it's, of ticklers. That's that's what it sounds like, but that's not exactly oh, really? what okay. it's about. No, obviously I haven't seen it then. I've seen... I remember vaguely seeing the trailer, and it was almost like... Um, Marketed as like a Comic Con for people that really enjoy tickling and getting tickled. So wh- shirtless, just like the preview is as creepy as creepy gets. Here's what it is: this it's uh, the the cre- the the filmmaker is this New Zealand this new this journalist from New Zealand. Fucking weirdo! And uh, he does like human interest stories for like you know the today show in new zealand or whatever that shit is oh so and, he's, a, he's a documentarian yeah he's a documentarian so, okay he's not a sicko he found this incredible community and yeah so he was like researching online and he saw a competitive tickling league wow. and so he wanted to do a story on it at the tokyo dome and just shit goes down like there's so many twists and turns in this story it's ridiculous but i wanted to know and you should see it. Please see it. Okay. But cool. if somebody was like, I'll give you a hundred bucks. Just explain the movie to me. I, I don't. Do you really want me to give it all away? There's like so many twists and turns. So the preview was basically just like the first five minutes of the documentary. It's really about like who is behind this competitive tickling league. Oh, yeah. wow. Pedophiles. I, you'll just have to find out. Okay. See. But please watch it. It's we'll on find HBO out Go. Next week, on HBO Square. Go. Watch okay. it. I will watch it um, with but Chris tonight. If somebody, I have a date with Chris. You know that? Is You're that invited. Your boyfriend? Heading down to Noops. Great. Are you in? No. Look at me. I'm out. Okay. All right. Um. 
If somebody offered you a hundred dollars, would you do a tickling video? I mean, it's no. not. Oh no, yeah, for sure. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you would do uh, it? any any kind of video worth exposure. I would because I would play it off as like this is weird, you know. I'm getting tickled for a hundred bucks, but I'm on camera. No, I would make the best of it and try to like promote myself as an actor, something like that. Okay, like what if you wanted to get a job and then the, they saw the tickling video and yeah, they're just like, oh, I'll pass. I just have to be like, not my the- demo, not my demo. <laughs> Okay, so you would do it. If would the you person do it who I was okay, if it was twenty viral bu- enough, twenty dollars. No, I do it for a hundred dollars. A hundred hundred dollars not on the table. They never offered you a hundred. No, you they just said asked, twenty. You bucks. just set the scenario. Of, okay, okay would you do it for less money than a hundred dollars? All right, is it like what kind of production? Would we're you do it about? for free? Is this one guy with a camera, or will I be invited You're to at a like studio? A, a studio. It's yeah. a studio. It's a studio. Production. And it's actually professionally done. And I'm yeah, just getting tickled. But it's just you getting tickled by like hot dudes in uh oh, in I their get underwear. It now. Like I you're get in it your now. underwear. Guess what? I'm not gonna go viral on YouTube. I'm gonna go viral in on the Red fetish Tube community. In the fetish department. Yeah. yeah. Hell no. What well, well, what if I'm really but, good at it? Hey, if I not... get a bunch of dudes off because of my amazing performance, then great. But yeah, you're not doing anything sexual per se. Like yeah, exactly. you're, you're wearing you're not wearing your shirt, but you're wearing, you know, like uh, twenty bucks, uh, some swimming no, 20 trunks, bucks seems some a above little... the knee swimming trunks, not speedos. No, or I know, no, 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 yeah, no, no, no. I, I know that. Yeah, the, I, the scenario where I'm naked, probably no, Best, especially not for twenty bucks. Twenty bucks makes it seem a little more sordid, though. So then a hundred, a hundred, yes. Okay. But you know what? Maybe not. I mean, if I, if it's like a, like you know, professional porn crew or something like that, and it's like people are getting paid to film this. I would probably see that as an opportunity. And I would say, yeah, I'll do it for 20 bucks. But yeah. if it's like some dude in some like basement, you know? No. Yeah. It'd have to be at no. at a neutral position. It can't be at someone's yeah. house. You no, know, it's uh, because these scenarios where it's like, okay, I will take the money. Like they don't exist yeah. in the real world. I would say, yeah. And then if uh, like I get closer to the where it's take going down, I'm like, oh fuck. This is not what I expected. Here's your money back. Bets off. I'm running and I'm faster than you because you're 450 pounds, you know? Yeah. That's, that's what would go down. But if it was like, yeah, all right. Okay. I get tickled. Okay. I'd make it seem like really awkward and uncomfortable. And it's like, I wouldn't be like, Oh God. Or maybe I would I'd be like, <laughs> Ooh, Brad, it's not my back. That, you, that that becomes somebody's fetish. It's got to be tied to your childhood, right? Like you remember being a little kid and an adult tickling you, and it's like you'd think it was funny, but then I'd it was like it. then it was like too much. I like, would hate no, it so it's much. Too much. I would hate it. But you would like it for like a few seconds, and then you're like, no, I I can't laugh this <laughs> much. I oh might die. I might die Dude, from laughing. Oh, okay. I hope to hell my mother doesn't listen to this episode because mommy did a great job. Okay. But I remember being so horrified of her tickling fingers. She had like long ass nails too. Like, I'm going to get oh. you. Like, no, please. I'm not joking around. And then I was like, ah, I can't breathe. Oh, I'm going to get you. Oh, I'm going to get you. I'm the tickle yeah. monster. So like, some no, people. No, stop. Please stop. Some people like get off on that memory. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I was horrified. I was like, yeah. it was like a monster that would tickle like, mom, no, please. Yeah. So what if like a, oh, someone man. that wasn't your mom that was like hot, you, like a hot babysitter Here's me with big titties tickled you when you were a little kid. Oh man. And then that became forever. Yeah. The thing that you sought out. A babysitter. Whew, yeah. That babysitter be... tickling like that's like the ultimate pleasure you could ever give to yourself so why would the how old's the babysitter like 18 yeah you know she's a, what a she's a sicko. prime piece of ass tickling like a little kid no like but that? she was innocently tickling you but that was like your first sexual experience everything oh. through like as you develop into yeah. a man ties back to that moment okay like i don't think first, babysitters like... should be tickling kids okay <laughs> it's inappropriate you know because you're already in a position of power okay this you one... already know that like the person you're sitting as this is your 16 year old neighbor that right. your mom trusts to babysit okay you and it wasn't like it was just the act of getting tickled 
was just so overwhelming that it's stuck in your psyche somehow or your I don't know whatever like because no you're you know you're like a little four or five year old kid and this is like oh she's a girl and I, I think I like girls and she's right. kind of she's pretty you know being around a pretty girl she and her tickling good. you yeah that's like you know your first experience with something like that where you think like oh this is what this kissing stuff's all about you know what I mean? It the brain. Makes an it makes an impression on you. Yeah. I'm trying to look up where, like, what part of the brain that is that elicits these, like, like from past experience where it's chambered and that's what yeah. gets you off 30 years later. Like, what part, what's going on in the brain? You know, is, a right, is that a left brain or a right brain kind of thing? It's like, where does sex live? Like, I'm a, I've learned this before, but... I've totally forgot. Right, in like a psychology class or you yeah. know, like in, yeah. But that was that was a long time ago. I'm telling you, man, I was smarter as a 21-year-old than I am now. I was just so like open to learning new things and all these classes were like interesting. I took a forensic anthropology class. <sighs> now I just know that America is Budweiser and Budweiser is America. All right. Well, you got that going for you. I commented on this uh, Twitter feed the other day. Like, do you ever see people like ask a question and then just people just pile on and it becomes kind of viral on Twitter? This guy was like... More so on Reddit, but yes, I'm familiar with the concept. This guy was like, name a movie that people love that you hate. All right. All right. One came to m my mind immediately that I've always hated that people love. I could do the same for bands, too. Oh, bands, but, it's easier for me. Yeah. I guess the movies. Because I usually go with the general assessment of a movie. I usually go with, like, Queen if it's bands. Because I'm usually just, like, kind of like, eh. Yeah, you know. Queen I, seems like a gimmick to me. And yeah, and has. what did I say? I was shocked. I was like, no, man. Good. But like, I know the hits and that's it. Like, I don't like them to the point where I sought them out. And I yeah, and the seek hits out are bands. just kind of generic. But I no, I, I liked I think I appreciated it more for the performance, I guess. Like, I'm sure they were incredible. He, live he shows. was a, a great front man. That's for sure. Yeah. So I like, like Freddie well, Mercury, do, you know, listening to it. We should be watching this. So I love seeing Queen concerts. Yeah. More than anything, like in like 1978, like that, like those a are Live Aid shows. concert when he had the mustache. I would rather. See, okay, th would you rather see Queen live or Led Zeppelin live? Like on a, you know, I'd rather see Led Zeppelin live. Not live as in there, but live as in watching a documentary or documentary like, you know, footage. footage. Would it be a documentary on the history of Led Zeppelin? No, it would be a concert. It would be a full. Like the concert. song remains the same. No, Something it would like be that. it would be a full concert, but it would be nicely shot. So it's like at least three cameras, but it's filmed in 1977, and it's either mm. Queen or Led Zeppelin. So it's it's not it, like it's pleasing to the eye. Like it's it's a professionally done project, right? So it's yeah, documented. I don't know. In a I'd nice way. probably still go with Led Zeppelin Me because too. I like their songs I better. I wanted to say Queen, but then I'm like, well, then you get to just watch John Bonham drum, <laughs> and yeah, that looks and amazing. There's like a lot of like if they played like rain song or something, I would just be so happy. Right. But you softened up a little bit with Queen as far as appreciating Freddie Mer Mercury as a performer. Yeah. So that's why everyone loves. Queen. So as I, I, I don't know if you could say this movie is universally loved, but it was always a movie that was like crammed down my throat and I would always regurgitate it back up. Escape from New York. No. Rudy. That's a good answer. I'm not going to defend Rudy. Like Rudy was, I can't tell you how many times going to Catholic school, <laughs> being a boy, that people made me watch that movie yeah. to like inspire me. Really? It was like, well, we obviously almost every year. Really? Rudy? Rudy. Maybe I just kind of, how is Rudy holding up? It's still a very inspirational Here's what I don't get. But, like, I don't get what's inspirational about it. Yeah, but Rudy, I don't okay. think it's it's really its legacy is held up all that much. It's never mentioned in the greatest 
sports movies of like all time. I feel like people talk about it when they talk it's about football hacky. movies. Like as compared, like what other football movies? Unnecessary like the, roughness. No, people don't talk about that, man. Well, not they do at my house. The Longest Yard. What other the Burt Reynolds movies? Longest Yard? Yeah, the Burt Reynolds Longest Yard. Rudy. Uh, that like, Dallas. People talk about Rudy. Rudy. Yeah, well, no. I I'm, wonder what the Rotten Tomatoes on Rudy is. I'm what was that the, up uh, right now? Dallas North. What, oh, Friday uh, Night Lights? No, 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 no. That one, I guess people talk about that one, though. So we're both just going on our computers now. Well, okay. I'm looking. Nick Nolte, the Nick Nolte movie. Dallas Buyers Club. <laughs> <laughs> what was Nick, that called? Like Dallas Nick, North 50 or something? That was a beautiful... What about Brian's song? Ooh. I don't like that one either. Um, they they made Brian's song so they could be like, strong men do cry. Is Forrest Gump a football movie? Strong. Okay, Rudy has an, is certified fresh. It has 80% on Rotten Tomatoes, and the audience score is 90%. That's pretty, it's pretty high. Pretty high. Okay, um, but here's the thing. Look, what exactly is inspirational about Rudy's story? Would they make us believe he's, uh, he's five foot nothing, a hundred and nothing? Okay, and there he goes out there and he's just. <laughs> they make us believe <laughs> he makes a tackle. They make us believe that his whole life he's the his biggest dream was to go to Notre Dame, right? Okay, and he made it, but he slacked off in high school. And he had to go to a community college in order to even be able to do it. So he went to the community college. So it's like, fine. And then he goes to Notre Dame. And he's like, I want to play on the football team. But they're like, fuck you. You're on the practice squad. And he's like, okay, I'll be on the practice squad. He proceeds to get the shit kicked out of him. Who knows how many concussions he's got. The actual Rudy is probably like a maniac now that like can't find his keys and has like beaten his wife. Because of all the C T E. Okay, well, the original Rudy is obviously dead. This is like in 1952, right? All of the C T E he endured. Like, what is his brain like? Oh, and he, he was did Brazilian. This all because he liked this one random school where people play football, and he was too small to do anything. You just don't get the message, man. I mean, that's their their message is saying like, do you if you if you got a dream, you you go do it. That's but like the message. you know, but like, what if your dream? isn't the right dream for you. What if you've created this dream and this dream could destroy you in the end? Okay, was his goal to be... He got the shit kicked was out of Was his goal him. to be in the NFL? Like, why don't we learn no. about... what? Why don't we learn about what he did with his degree? Because he fucking got into Notre Dame. None of this is about education. This is all about getting on that field and getting the shit kicked out of you for nothing. People play college football for free, and a lot of them could be cripples. They could just be horribly Especially injured for the then. rest of their lives. So You're it was sacrificing your brain okay, and your look, well-being. It's been a while since I've seen the movie. And speaking of the movie, I was at an Angels game. It was a sellout. It was actually Nolan Ryan's last game at Angel Stadium. This is back when it was orange seats, and it was completely enclosed. So it was basically the Rams were still playing there at the time. We were supposed to be the Rudy crowd. They brought out like a bunch of people to cheer us on. They had it on the big screen. Rudy, Rudy. It was like Warner oh. Brothers is going to have a movie coming out soon, and we want you to be a part of it. You're going to be in the movie, this crowd, blah, blah, blah. Wow, I didn't know they yeah. did that. That's crazy. And we blew it, man. I don't think they even used us. Was it was John like Favreau terrible. there getting close-up shots? No, no, no. No one was filming. It was for audio exclusive. It was just for audio. Oh, okay. So we were just picking up our audio. And we're all like, Rudy, 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 Rudy. <laughs> and I don't know if they actually used it because they went, <laughs> rumor has it, they also went to Yankee Stadium. But, you know, they just filtered us in there. But you very well could hear a spry nine-year-old boy just discovering his penis and ball saying, Rudy, let's go. <laughs> well, that's why all that right. movie means a lot to me. Why don't you well, suck my shit to fucking me. Rudy? Well, what's a movie that you don't like that a lot of people love? All right, I got one for you. Um, the Matrix. But you've never seen it. Yes, I have. I talked to you like recently about The Matrix, and you said because you've I never shunned it off. Seen it. I've seen it. I've seen the first one the whole way through. 
and I kind of slept through it, but there wasn't any outside like. You what know, exactly inf- did you not like about it? Nothing spoke to me. I feel like the first Matrix is very good. Okay, first of all, I think this is a flawed scenario here because I think it's just fine if you haven't seen the movie. I think that is acceptable because then you really hate it. What has compelled me? Because I was lying just then. No, I haven't yeah, seen it the whole way through. Yeah, you have And I think that counts. I hate it so it much. It count. I don't even want to sit through it. You can't I hate, hate something you haven't it. seen. Really? All right, fine. Raging Bull. Just kidding. Okay. Um. <laughs> You're just trying to, you fucking All right. fake piece All right. of shit. All right, how about this? Lawrence of, <laughs> Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> All right. You're just looking through a list of no, I'm movie not. names. Like, fuck you, David Lean. Like, you know how to make a movie? Yeah. I prefer older Peter O'Toole, okay? <laughs> Okay, how about this? I right, right, fine. I got one, but it's more. It should I, be more simple. Okay, I got like one. You should. I got it, one, this should but live you know in what? Your soul, I think this a lot of people are going are ju- have already jumped on my side. All right, so I'm talking about this movie when it came out. So we're talking 2002, The Lord of the Fucking Rings, the first okay. one, the okay. whole identity of it. You know, now it's like cool to not like it because it's older. I'm talking about when it came out. I was like. Fuck this shit. I don't give a flying fuck about Frodo or any of this fantasy bullshit. This movie can fucking suck my god dick. <laughs> hey, Cassie. <laughs> well, I bet your sister really liked that movie. No, nope, she didn't like it either. Really? Yeah. Wow, she, she read everything. Like she kind of did. People. She kind of she read all all the Tolkien books, but she was like, eh, eh it didn't really take over. I'm kind of with you on that. I find it to be like I think. Every single time I went to see one of the, I've seen all of them in the theater. I didn't see the Hobbit ones, but all of the Lord of the Rings movies I saw in the theater. And I think I slept for about 20 to 30 minutes during each one. Yeah. I and did, I didn't miss oh, a thing. I didn't sleep, but I mean, I'll tell you one thing. The episodes one, two, and three of Star Wars get a lot of flack. I saw those in the theaters, too. They're at least shorter. And I had a better experience watching them. I never fell asleep. Well, it's not true. I fell asleep during the pod ras- racing scene in episode one. But you that fell was only because during we saw the, the only good scene in the movie. I know movie. exactly. Isn't that funny? <laughs> but that's because it was the midnight showing at the Cinemopolis. Oh, yeah. I was beat. It was like on a Thursday for a high oh, school man. student that sleep deprived anyway. I think yeah, that was like freshman year too, right? Yeah, it was freshman year. Well, damn. Well, uh, what movie did we watch? I thought Seven Samurai was a little boring, which I'm afraid to say. Like, maybe I need to analyze it a little bit in more. In the intellectual community, that yeah. would be heresy, I guess. I know. You're more of a Magnificent Seven guy? Ran. Ran. Mike, what movie did we watch? We watched film number 29. I already said it. You did? Film number oh, 29 yeah, of did. 500, 100. Yes, yeah. you did. I do remember you Die Hard that. with a Vengeance, starring Ludwig Bora, Borga. And Bora. Damien Jesus Demento. Jesus Christ. Okay, did you spot them in this I movie? I only spotted Ludwig Borga. And I'm very familiar with with da- uh, Damien Demento's facial features. I, I, I had to look up all. where Damien Demento was in I the movie. I had no idea. Okay, um, after the aqueduct scene, yeah. when they're getting fought, when Zeus picks up Bruce Willis after he gets shot out of that pipe. I love that scene. Um, you know how that car chases them and they have a shootout with that car? Excellent and chase, they, excellent shootout. Um, the guy shooting out the window, that's Damien oh, okay. Demento. Well, maybe I should go back. And I didn't like put the effort into like, oh, where is he? God damn it. <clears throat> he wasn't in any of, that was it then, huh? Because there were uh, different. Ludwig had a bigger role. He had a bigger role. He had a comedic role as well. Yeah. And like, you know, he had, they gave him some lines. But I would assume, like, because I remember there being, like, other brute German henchmen. So I was like, oh, it's just one of the other guys that beats up John McClane, like, down in the, you know, yeah. cellar area. And that, nope. He kind of blends in with everyone. He's yeah. shaved completely bald for the scene. Um. Okay. So I was compelled to lo- look up Ludwig Borga, the man, after watching this. And... He's got a hell of a life story. Really? I really think, like, 
I need to go do like a short bio of him and blow your fucking mind, Mike. Okay? Wow. Well, fill us in on who Ludwig Borga is. I remember him from uh, the new... It's a new generation, right? Yeah. He, you know, 94, 93, 94. He had a feud with Lex Luger. He had a feud with Lex Luger. Did right? he have a feud with The Undertaker, or did he begin one? Or? His only really big you know, heel push would have been with Lex Luger. With Lex Luger. During the Lex Express. Yeah. Um, so his name's Tony Halme. He was born and he's lived in Helsinki for right. most of his childhood. Oh, so really? he's actually Finnish. He's not German like in this movie or... They said he was from Finland, I guess, yeah. in the WWE. No, he right? had the Finnish, he had the flag, yeah. the blue and white flag. But it's like, that's so funny because Finland is like such a peaceful, like happy country. Like it's always like number one on the happiness index. Isn't it weird that they decided to make a heel from Finland? Oh, they'll get you, man. Like they're no, they're always number one in everything. They're like number one in healthcare, number one in education. Like everybody loves Finland. Everybody in Finland. They don't happy. have like muscle guys. <laughs> they don't have like muscle men. They're all just like, oh, just show the fuzz can. Well, they had or they had Ludwig Borga. That's that's funny. So maybe now I'm thinking he wasn't billed as a, like. Why would they go with? Uh, are you sure he was billed as from Finland? I, I just know I watched his, a promo his last tights night were and he blue was, and white. He was from Finland. He huh. was. Um. Because I yeah I remember him as being you know the. So he Cold was Cold War German or sorry Russian to the Lex. They just Express. kind of Express. tie that to any country, yeah, I right. guess, and they're like, ah, oh, what the fuck? Well, yeah, he's a terrorist. He's a very strong fin- yeah, he's Finnish a, terrorist. He's a Finnish terrorist. Um, and so he had a troubled childhood. He was a bully, and the uh, the kids in the neighborhood would point to him to like beat people up. Wow! So he was one of those so he kids. had a heart of gold. A bully with a heart of yeah. gold. A Robin Hood. At a very young age, he excelled at athletics, including handball, football, and ice hockey. And then power training and weightlifting came along, and he joined the Finnish national weightlifting team. After retiring from pro wrestling, he became an MMA fighter. He I remember that. I remember his that. His record is 0-4. and four. And his most recent fight was a loss uh, to Randy Couture. He submitted Ludwig Borga in 56 seconds. Huh. Yeah. That's kind of... That's no, I a, knew this. That's a big opponent to lose to. Wait. Randy Couture. Yeah, well, he's got to be in that weight class. That's always getting the shit kicked out of him. If he could drop weight, maybe he'd win it one or two. That Back then, there was, there was like two weight classes in the UFC. There were more sanctions then, right? I mean, we're talking 96, this is, 97. This is UFC 13. So oh, they yeah. started bringing in gloves so they and weren't, stuff. So the weight class wasn't an issue. But they didn't. Or, the UFC didn't really even bring in like lightweight. They they tried, They did like an experiment with lightweight for like a year, and then they got rid of it. But was fighting and then they brought this, it back in like 2005. Was it still like, you know, anybody's bet like when disciplines were combined and no stuff. they would be like this one's a heavyweight contest right. this is light they would have they had like heavyweight light heavyweight middleweight for a while and then they started getting less smaller and smaller weight classes um so he was also a member of the finnish parliament he had a seat in parliament during his parliamentary career he raised controversies. The day after the election, he referred to President Tarja Halonen as a lesbian in a radio interview. He, <gasps> <laughs> he stated that if a lesbian can be president of Finland and he can be a member of parliament, anything could be possible. <laughs> a Beautiful. Huge, I think this is that prime minister. Did you ever see when Conan O'Brien went to Finland and he was like, I look exactly like their female oh, prime the minister. Oh, wow. I think that's her. Are you serious? So he was just a strong man, just just stepping up for everybody else, all the rest of the boys to be like, not in my backyard. Yeah. He's the muscle so, man. A huge wow. uproar ensued. And uh, What did the, he do on a day-to-day basis? Okay. He probably just he represented his office. Finland. They, he would probably make a lot of appearances. They called it a personal attack, and like he was raked over the coals by the... Uh, the the uh, media. I feel like, dude. So if, he later had to apologize. Wow. 
in uh, now that I think of it, those tough mans that I used to watch it as a kid on ESPN, the finish were well represented. They were like oh, in, yeah? the, in the top. There's a know, lot of top dudes. five always. They would always beat the Americans. Okay. On July, f- uh, there's a lot of big dudes from Iceland. Like Iceland, there's. I guess maybe it's all the Viking genes or something. Yeah, there's but all the strong men like in uh, Iceland are green, and all the strong men in Greenland exactly. are ice. Um, on July 4th, 2003, a handgun was fired inside of Ludwig Borga's apartment. No one was injured, but the gun was unlicensed. He was subsequently hospitalized as he had only had days before been in a boxing match and was using prescription painkillers, but his blood has a additionally contained trace amounts of amphetamines while a police search of his house um of his house of parliament office turned up illegal steroids he claimed that it was uh somebody put the amphetamines into a drink without his knowledge his trial was broadcast on national tv this were already there including mtv3 what the fuck? he received a four months suspended sentence and a fine and he continued to serve as a member of parliament until 2006 when he was convicted for drunk driving. Wow. This whole story is bullshit for two reasons. Number one, there is no MTV3. Number two, we all know Finland does not have apartments. There's one in Finland, I guess. Hmm. In 2006, he was involuntarily committed to a mental hospital, reportedly due to delirium caused by excessive alcohol use. Jesus Early in Christ. 2006, he was diagnosed with alcohol-related cirrhosis and acute pancreatitis. So, After spending most of the year of 2006 on sick leave, he went on his d- disability pension from the parliament. Wow. In 2009, he told a newspaper he was suffering from impairment of short-term memory and had trouble remembering anything, but was still trying to write a book about his political career. But on, first, I have to learn to read. On January 8th, 2010, three days after his 47th birthday, he died from a self-inflicted gunshot <gasps> wound no from way. an unlicensed handgun. Oh, my God. His body was found two days later. later. Wow. Following his death, Jim Ross stated, I won't speak at length about those that have passed away, but Tony obviously had issues and was not a great guy to be around. Perhaps others have a different view of this man, but I personally found him to be somewhat obnoxious and he could be a bully if allowed to be such. Guys like him don't mix well in the locker room and need to be removed from the team sooner rather than later. I still feel badly about the last years of his life as things really unraveled for him seemingly due to alcohol and drug issues. Wow. I don't know which movie I want to see more, the Ludwig Borga movie or the Dino Bravo movie. You know, well, I know that he was gunned down. He by was some gunned gangsters. down in some. Yeah. And I don't know the specifics of it. I would love for someone to really dig deep in there. He was like something involving the mafia, you know. So Ludwig Borg is almost the more elitist, highbrow version of that. You know, only he probably got in some serious shit. It was his own habits that got him in the end. And not yeah. someone else's bullet. And losing four MMA fights and suffering all that wow, brain what damage. Interesting. Interesting. Man. See, go out and get it, kids. Just strive. Yeah. You can be whatever you want to be. You be dead by a self-inflicted gunshot wound at the age of 47. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you did something, right? Yeah. All right. So, Die Hard with a Vengeance. What did you think? Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? I love this movie. I rate this one behind the first one. Just slightly. Though, and the first one is awesome. The first one's the of greatest course. action movie of all time. I'm saying awesome like everyone doesn't know. Yeah. Um, so, of course, Hans is a better villain than Alan Rickman, but not bad with his brother, not bad with Simon yeah. at all. Um, <clears throat> I guess my problem with Simon is that we, I didn't really believe that he had a vendetta against... John McClane. He didn't because he saw an opportunity was, yeah, within him. He was really trying to, you know, to do pull off this heist. That's why it works. But it's like you can't just pull off a heist and involve John McClane. I guess he did. You didn't get the memo from your dead brother. 
Well, this he, t- pride, he took pride on, gets the best of these yeah, Germans, man. He took on your brother's entire army single handedly and won. Yeah, you think bad guy gonna, to target? Why would you involve this guy at all? Especially if he yeah, was so, already so there suspended. is a vendetta. So he exactly. Yeah. So he was already off the he force in the, the fucking force. first place. Yeah. This is the best time for you to do this. Yeah, you didn't and have like to he involve had this him elaborate at all. Plan. Yeah, he still could have done. Everything it's like one or the did. other. Do to be vindictive or yeah. have an elaborate plan to steal from the Federal Reserve in New York. All you really had to do, Simon, is blow up the train like you planned and then call in the threat for all the schools. Yeah. You would still empty out Wall Street that way. You know what? Who <laughs> fucking cares, man? Come on, Simon. You blew Simon. it, Simon. <laughs> you blew it. I love this fucking movie. As far as duos go, I put them up there in the top five. Yeah, I I've, love this. When duo. I was watching I it, I was like, "How funny it is!" Yeah, and they really this is hysterical. They really have the Lethal Weapon formula. Absolutely. They're, yeah. And so then I was like looking up fun facts, right? Riggs and, and Murdoch um, are like even with them, and they've had a longer journey. Of course, if if we draw the, drew yeah. their, their friendship and well, you know, so partnership after out, it might this, not be as good. I looked it up. Because of that dynamic that we all love. We all love the white rogue cop with, with the black sidekick. And um, this I'm not film, racist. You're the one that's racist. What the hell? This like, film was fun. originally titled Simon Says. Zeus was scripted as a woman and was considered by Joel Silver to be the fourth sequel to Lethal Weapon. Wait, However, Zeus from No Holds Barred? No. You fucking. You mean idiot. Jesus? Yeah. Jesus. That's a great line there, right? I mean, come on. That yeah. was fun. White, white but, guy, black so, guy, like. So this was a random ass script called Simon Says that they were originally gonna just plug in Riggs and Murtaugh, oh. but then they were like, no, let's just make this a diehard movie, and then we'll give him like a black sidekick to play off. Of. Wow, cool. <laughs> yeah, that kind of funny. Totally works though, because all you need is that character. You need yippee yay yeah. motherfucker. God at the damn end. it, McLean. That story, the arc, yeah, the heart of that story would work with any character. Yeah. All you need is a, it's a buddy movie. What wow, I mean, that's amazing. So what it I wasn't really intended lo- to be as Die Hard. I love how they bonded. Uh, wow. They like clicked immediately. Yeah, They're a good yeah. team. Yeah, because I like I remember the opening scene was so uncomfortable when he's Simon says walk around Harlem with a sign that says I hate N words on. Yeah, I remember as a kid like feeling so bad for him. Like, no, it, he's just on a job. Yeah, he doesn't really get it. He doesn't really mean that. He doesn't mean it at all. And I remember it being so uncomfortable that I hated watching that scene, and seeing it again, it was pretty quick. Yeah, so like it wasn't it didn't tarnish his legacy in that it was one black lady saw him just like shaking her head. And then a bunch of a gang just instantly, you know, yeah. enra- I love the reveal of it too, where then, his, uh, his like nephews or whatever. Um, they're like, dad, there's a white guy or yeah. they're like uncle Zeus. There's a white early, guy outside. And but he's I, like, I just, as a kid, I remember it. Like, they're like, oh, not man, a white guy like this, the streets of Harlem back and forth. Yeah. With this sign. And he's naked, just wearing underwear. It was like so uncomfortable, like this poor guy. Yeah. Like he doesn't believe that though, that I was I was I was not looking forward to this scene. And now and I watch when this. I see it again, it's like, oh that was that was quick and the the situation was handled very well. <laughs> now I watch this with the perspective like, oh, and he's also severely hung over. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the whole time. The whole I never aspirin really thing. thought about the whole high yeah, hangover and the aspirin, thing. The bottle of aspirin, before. which yeah. was a total coincidence. He's asking for aspirin at the end and our Simon throws them a bottle of aspirin and that leads to, redirects them to where yeah. they're located. What's the deal with people in movies that take pills and don't drink water? <laughs> yeah, it's isn't that's like because a thing. it's tough. Yeah, like even in Limitless, the yeah, latest pill movie chewing that involves, your pills <laughs> that involves pills. You know, just drink some water. You take a pill and and you're just you remember everything. Of course, they have that scene where you just suck it back and then I slap it on home, take it dry, like the Black Angus guy. <laughs> I love that Black Angus guy. Um, and he would like, <laughs> you can't overdose on aspirin. You I'm can. sorry. You, you can. can. Or you at can. least have some severe long-term issues. Yeah. And he popped at least 20 aspirin in this movie. And it's all in real time. So we're talking about like a 12-hour shift. Yeah. What are you thinking, Simon? You really do have a death wish. Going after John McClane 
And then chewing all that I aspirin? I thought he would die from the aspirin. <laughs> but I forgot to say Simon Says before I ordered it at the local CVS. One thing that took me out of the Harlem scene, watching it this time around, is the one of the gang members that throws the knife. Like, you just have like a... This is like a Harlem street gang, and they've got like a knife throwing yeah. expert. I know. Like... You don't I, need that. I wonder if it would make scenes... it more real if you didn't have the fucking knife thrower yeah. guy. They yeah, already had the bottle and the gun. Yeah. Well, that's not the. It's not a gritty Harlem story about Harlem. You know, it's it's lame. It's hacky. You know, oh, the black gang. Oh boy. That's like eighties Michael it Jackson. Was. Yeah, it was. That didn't beat work. it. Video. And I, I remember seeing that going like, no. Oh, okay. Really? This is 1995. We've already had Biggie, Wu Tang, Mob yeah, Deep. I know. Like, but it wasn't. You you could have that. Yeah, but it wasn't pop culture. It was pop Not, culture. Notorious B.I.G. Are you fucking kidding me? But well, I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. And what I mean <laughs> by pop culture is it wasn't on MTV3, and that's all I was allowed to watch in Finland as a young Hawaii <laughs> boy. <laughs> sorry, that was a bit. You're right. I well, don't know. I don't know. That, so uh, it's a bad scene, but that's one few, you know, scenes that didn't work in many that did. Well, you watch that credit card commercial from uh, Tour de Pharmacy, that Finnish credit card commercial. Yeah. With the the titties and did the spilled I? milk. Oh, yeah. Callback nice. to our Tour de Pharmacy episode. Where's that? I don't know, where would I find it? Like on the net or something like that. Would I find it on the net? What? That commercial? No, the movie with Sandra Bullock. Yes. They're on iTunes. Sam Jackson is the man. Why don't you pick up a promotion when I drop it for once in your fucking life, dude? That was a softball. You need to talk about our Twitter. You need to talk about our Facebook. You need to talk about our Podbean. You need to talk about my mother. You need to talk about me. I don't want to talk about any of that shit. Me neither. Moving on. Sam Jackson is the man in this movie. Love him. Yep. But it also, the chemistry between him and Bruce Willis is what makes it even better. Yeah. Uh, and God, how fucking hot was he at this time? On the heels of Pulp Fiction, I want to yeah. say? It was like the same year. They really softened him having him wear the those glasses with the little yeah. chain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he was... It's like, we need to soften this guy up a little bit. We yeah. don't want him to be too hardcore. Like, we want him to be a regular dude. How can we do it? Let's put glasses on him with a little chain. And then he's just a regular nice dude. And that suit. That I always love, works with that suit. Yeah. That's like, we're talking Michael Douglas. I think my favorite scene with yeah. him in this movie yeah. is when uh, they go to hotwire that car. And he's like, can you hotwire this thing? And he's like, of course. I'm an electrician. But it takes too fucking long. I love long. that scene, too. Yeah. No, yeah. but first it starts off with, Me. what, you think all black, just because I'm black? Yeah. Like, of course I can, because I'm an electrician. But it's easier to do it this way. And he just, <laughs> that's how shitty cars were made yeah. back then. This movie's kind of like speed, don't you think? They could, they were both in, like, the same era, too. Uh, yeah, I think so, because excellent, you know, live Everything's action, on a timetable. Stunts, you have, like, a guy, like, great stunts, calling in threats. Great sets. Yeah, and it keeps yeah. building and building and building. You're There's racing a, around the city. You've got yeah. it. Everything's got, on a it's timeline. It's like a chase, but it just goes in a circle. Yeah, everything happens in one day. Man, speed, yeah. speed is very underrated. Yeah. Speed is spectacular. Action, it's almost like action movies are better when they happen in the span of a day. Yeah, I totally agree with yeah. that. When, when, they're, when they're not global, when, when it's you know just a little microcosm here. Like we have, I mean, of course... And by that, yes, in this in the realm of action, I'm talking about as broad as the state of New York, basically, or yeah. at least Manhattan, you know. But still, that's like one story that we're getting. Like when it's all action yeah. everywhere, like when it's one crew, a trope of like you know four guys, and there's like uh, Rambo Part Two, First Blood, is excellent. I that's haven't excellent. seen it actually. That's the first time it's actually like an action movie before it's, you know, scaled down and stripped down this vet with these internal demons. And, and then it breaks off into, you know, a Vietnam kind of a movie. 
Rambo 2 is all Vietnam, all war, all action, blah, blah, blah. So what do you get? You get great stunts. You get action, real helicopters, professionals doing these crazy maneuvers. And that shit's yeah. timeless because those are real helicopters, Ryan. They are. <sighs> I just love that they use the city as like some an oppose, opposing force against our heroes. Like they have to fight traffic. Yeah. They have to figure yeah, out beautiful. how to get places. Like he's like... I told you I used to be a cab driver. You can't go through the park highway. And he's like, I didn't say the park highway. We're not going the park highway. We're going through the park. park. And they're just driving through Central Park. Yeah. Are you aiming for these people, John? You're fucking crazy. (laughs) And I love how every single time his initial response was like, are you crazy? (laughs) No. And all of John's colleagues just like shit on him relentlessly. They're like, this guy's an alcoholic dirt yeah, bag. Know. His wife even hates it. Well, imagine him in the break room, dude, just getting but water. Getting he's like, a fucking hero, man. Right. He fine. took and out he everybody. Wears, he Nak- obviously wears it on his sleeve. The like, Nakatomi like John, Plaza just make thing. make a cup of coffee. All right. Die Hard 2 where he's at the, uh, the airport. I would tell John I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> he's like the greatest hero in the history of the police force. Well, that's and he does it in multiple cities. <laughs> yeah, but every... What do you think it was that got him the suspension? I guess he just became a dirtbag alcoholic. On the job. But there's, yeah, he's, so he good that the job. he's so good that it's just like, all right, three months. Yeah. And he's like, fuck yeah, thank God. Yeah, he's like, I need some more time to drink. Yeah, that was great. Like, you have any idea how they probably just ransacked my store? He's like, oh, how do you think I feel? I was on an awesome suspension. <laughs> I was probably drinking every night. Yeah. Well, when they Excellent picked him character. up, like he was like, I haven't had a drink since this morning or whatever, and he was all out of it. Awesome. And I, they I, said and like I he did not pick like, up on that. You're supposed to drink the beer. You're not supposed to shower. To shower it. with it. So yeah. he's been. He's just usually beer all goes the inside the body. Yeah. Yeah. I did not pick up on and that at all. And he still had all of his wits about him. Yeah, he did. And then, but you know what bothers me? And I'm not saying that drinking or smoking is good, but they have that moment where he's calling the wife Holly. And what does he do? He gets goes for a pack of cigarettes, and he's like, you know what? Never mind. And he throws them away. Yeah. And I still heard that moment. You just want him to smoke? <laughs> no, I don't. But it's like, don't grab for it. Like, it's like, oh, wow, you were outside for a good 20 minutes there, John. But it's and such you didn't a, have one pull. It's a habit, you know? It's like a, a habit that he did, you don't think about. It's second yeah. nature. Or maybe he I'm will taking go out back. My, and he's like, you know what? Not now. It's a, the, I need to start anew. Like, I, you know, I could have died today. Yeah. I was strapped to a or bomb. Or how about this? What and I this? made it out. Like, do you know how many times I cheated death today? Right. Exactly. And I'm going to let these cigarettes kill me? Or it could be Fuck something that. like this. He's going to the payphone to call Holly. He goes for the cigarette out of routine like you suggested. He's got Holly on the mind. She probably got, gives him so much shit for that. You know, she's like, well, eh, it's not the right moment. You know, I'll smoke yeah. again, but not right now. You know, I have some dignity. I'm going to do like a little melodramatic thing right here. I'm going to have a cigarette again, but it's bad for me. Yeah. I, it's, I got to make ch- I haven't talked to my wife in a year. This is time for a change. No. Um, but, you know, I have problems with that whole ending sequence basically anyway. i love it are you kidding me excellent finish bad guy blows up in a chopper i just feel like it's a little rushed like we go from the, the boat that's not to, rushed at all I, because i, I like he's like now i'm just gonna get in the chopper and then he just shoots something you know i kind of wish maybe the whole conflict was resolved on the boat okay Instead of yeah, going to a it, new it, setting right. after like he cleans up. And that up, was quick. You know? And usually it's like, all right, we've been chasing, 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 but I've come close. And he's come back from death. And the very end is the first time that Simon's actually in a position where he could actually die. Yeah. And he dies. Like he's on top of everything. Yeah. But you know what? It's a chess game. You got to go pow, get him yeah. out where you can. So I like that. I think you're not satisfied because there's no romantic epilogue and that closure at the end where you get all the violence and boom, boom, you need that time to wind down. Yeah. And you didn't get that. We wind down, we go back up. But 
you do get the romance because there is absolutely no romance in this story. But at least it ends with the button of him going to the payphone, picking it up, and calling his wife. And it's yeah. like because but he pisses we her off because he just leaves her hanging on the phone that's to why go he calls kill her. Simon. So, so exactly, and then yeah. so, so it goes explosion. Well, the wife's probably pissed. Why? Because I, I oh yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. answer the phone. So then he goes to the payphone, and that's that's it. The perfect pace that's because the that's the amount of romance that yeah. we got between him and the wife. I, guess, I think it's the perfect ending. I, I, it's one of my favorite endings. I'm just more talking about the, the helicopter sequence. Okay. That, that's I right. kind of wish they could have made Simon a more formidable foe and have them face off in a, like maybe hand-to-hand combat, something like that, not like shooting a sign that hits his helicopter. Fair enough. Um, what do you think about the puzzle, puzzle-like elements in the film? Do you like that? It's like Saw mixed with Die Hard. I <clears throat> less puzzle to me than Riddle. You know, because yeah. it was more riddly. Well, it was kind of a it was Riddle's a math it was a math problem basically yeah. with the buckets I of water. I felt like it was abandoned because it was. And I didn't pick up on this, too, because as a kid, I remember it as being like, OK, well, now here's the next Simon Says. Do Oh, it's the one where Simon says this, this and that and the other. Thing. Yeah. And it was great up until, you know, in the. You know, I didn't say Simon Says, so I thought, you know, maybe that was a setup and they'd, you know, yeah, pay that off. And maybe they did. Would it be better if he was like just really shoot? just a crazy Riddler type of character? Well, just the game. And it wasn't a ruse. The, once the real chase started where they yeah. got more information, the game was gone. They completely abandoned the game of him. He was like, yeah, he was like, your game's bullshit. I I just realized it. it Why even bother going to Yankee stadium? Right. Yeah. And it was, and then that was definitely the B story. We weren't even following Samuel L. Jackson at that point. We didn't care about his motivation. Um, I think that maybe it was just a build to get to the water gallon scene in central park where you got, you know, five gallons here. You got three gallons here. Yeah. Get, make four gallons out of both. Because that was a hysterical scene. That, Those are the coolest, perfectly edited, coolest perfectly bombs cut. in movie history. I think too, how oh, they yeah. mix the liquids. Right. No, but I'm talking about yeah. the water jugs where they're yeah. like balancing each one. Yeah, to but they had around. the, you know, they had the bomb there. That's why I'm saying. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but you really see the liquids at the very end of the school, which happens to be strawberry pancake you syrup. S- Spoiler. You see the liquids in the train too. No, no, but it was... Every bomb is the mixing of the liquids. That's his system. Right, but that was... Yeah, it's an epoxy. Yes, I got it. But you could really see it. You in the see big it in the scale mini. in the big yeah, fridge. Yeah, you couldn't yeah. really see it in the briefcase all that well. So. Yeah. Um, Wrap it up! So, I'd give this an 8.3. I'm going to give it a... Classic 90s action film. Yeah. Uh, I'm going, uh, going 8.9. And... I like this movie more after seeing it again. I okay. thought it wouldn't hold up, and it's just so fun. Like I yeah. just forgive Great every loophole duo. in the script. I was I was completely engaged throughout okay. the movie. There was something in the movie that totally blew my mind. I wanted to know if you caught caught it. One character says, "Yeah." And I'm going to marry Donald Trump. Yeah, of course. And then later on, Bruce Willis is like, who the hell do you think you are, lady? Hillary Clinton? Yeah. What the fuck? 1995. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Predicting yeah. the no, future. No, no, I heard both, and I, but I didn't make the connection. But holy shit. Yeah. Um, so I already wow. gave you the fun fact about um, the, the uh, lethal weapon. You already gave the rating, too. And I gave the rating. Jonathan uh, Hensley, the writer, was actually detained by the FBI after completing the script for the film because he knew extensive information about the Federal Gold Reserve. Ooh, wow. So they didn't know he was prepping for a movie? or Wow. So the scene with the I hate N-word sign, that was... The message was put in post because they didn't actually want him walking around in public with that sign. Jesus <laughs> what a cr- you believe that shit like he was just walking around in public and they had like one gorilla camera they had a blank sign 
and then they put in the text later. I don't believe that. They were on. They were actually in Harlem. What do you think they do on a movie set? You think they they don't block off a street? They just allow cars to drive yeah, back maybe, and forth? They just, it's such an offensive thing. They didn't want him to walk around with it. Everyone it watching what he's doing is being paid by the studio to be They're there. They're still in a public area. They're people not in a public area. By. Yeah, they are. I've seen... They are not in a I've public area. I've seen people area. shoot in public, and I've seen, I've seen what they've done, dude. And I've not like signed a release or anything oh, okay. i've seen people i've seen film crews shoot yeah, scenes oh my god so fuck you drive down vermont dude. they were in harlem all right there wasn't right. a there wasn't on a movie okay. lot sorry you're right i'm wrong god um, can i be wrong for okay. once and uh i think this is bullshit i'm angry when samuel I'm... l jackson studied books by malcolm x to play this character because he wanted to get in that mindset oh that's bullshit. Yeah, it is bullshit because he was he not in that, that mindset. He he completely was not racist at all. He was like wearing this, you know, well, maybe he was because they were in a crazy environment. They they maybe he was because they he learned bonded. to love white people. He talks about white well, people. Well, he learned to love John McClane because yeah. of the scenario they were in. You know, so man, maybe, but okay. that's I don't know. Final fun fact, it would take 480 dump trucks to steal all the gold in the Federal Reserve. I'm Ryan the Muffler Bruckner saying, if Lex Luger is the backbone of this stinking country, I, Ludwig Borga, will break it. And I'm Mike Big Tobacco Ryan saying, waves a curling, sharks a swirling.